Howdy doody, welcome back. It's time to watch Harstem Attack. It's day nine daily number 710, where we learn to be a better gamer. I'm in the savannah. I realize I haven't made any mention of the background. I just went live and just began to do the show. I'm literally outside right now. Literally. Literally. Seriously. I am outdoors. Literally. So, um, the big thing that I wanted to point out, uh, in part one, of course, is how little Harstam attacked. Lots of little efficiencies allows him to have 74 probes by the 15 minute mark, and allows him just enough units, as we saw pre-break, to defend this upcoming attack. So, by no means has Harstam won the game. He's just in a position where he gets to arrive at the late game. One thing that I love about watching Harstam in this game is his um, the frequency with which he builds cannons. There was one back here, but it, it died. And there we see the forge coming up, as we said before. Here's this nice core mix. Remember that robotics facility that was busy building so many observers, which, uh, as we note, we see one here at the back, one here in the middle of the map, and one here over at the expansion. Great. Continuing to maintain efficiency, continuing to keep things going. Look at the Zealot warping. If you are like me, and you decide to actually go to the Harstam Vision and like check out his uh, camera movements, is it the C button? There we go. You'll see that he's coming back here all the time to look at these. Why is he not attacking? Because again, Harstam is ruthlessly patient. He wants to maximize the damage dealt by those. I want to come back to the mini-map. This is right after the battle's happened. See the observer spotting things up in mid-map. Just chilling. Here's the warp-ins happening over here. He's seen lots rallied, but he's also seen a lot stay here. You're noticing these red dots are not moving. And as they begin to move, and as a drop begins to step in, Harstam's actually being extremely rigorous about watching the mini-map throughout this entire thing. Hence why he was able to feed back down a photon cannon. And that would honestly be my number one advice to you, is that if you are doing this style of play, you must watch the minimap most of the time. So Harstam is moving forward. He has these zealots here still. Why is he not attacking? Because Harstam is going to be retreat focused. He's going to wait for this army to be somewhere like here. And that's when he's going to counterattack. He's just sitting, waiting. No reason to do the, excuse me, counter now. He sees a whole damn army there. One by that third expansion. One more towards the middle of the map where he'd want confirmation. And then he has observers at the vulnerable angle. Some more good setup stuff that Harstam does. Here is the moment where I think most Protosses freak out. This is that time when you have found that fancy person, maybe in a class, maybe at a party, a bar, you've met that oh-so-special someone, and you have their phone number, and you say, hey, and they respond, oh, hi, how are you? And you go, oh, my God, I don't know how, how to ask someone to marry me over text. You know, there's that, like, panic moment where you sense opportunity, and you don't know what to do. It's important in your love life to learn from Harson. Just be cool, just relax, just chill, just wait. Make sure you're ready for it, but don't force it. Make sure you're ready for it by sending a probe up and building pylons that can warp in. Pylons that can warp into counter. Expansions to get more money. Spreading Templar out for an inevitable later conflict. Chrono boosting double upgrades. Not a ridiculous number of gateways. Uh, we saw LG IMs first oftentimes go to 15 to 17 gateways at this point in time. We're just seeing Harstam chill. Moved forward to take the opportunity to retreat. Retreating, retreating, and as he retreats, BOOM! It's the big counterattack with zealots. 82 probes on the map. I think that maybe around 75 to 80 is a juicy number. If you go over, no big deal, because Harston went over, and Harston won anyways. I want to speed this up. Uh, I, I could actually talk about this game longer. I'm actually going to zoom back a bit for this moment. 
A warp in begins, begins to clear out this top side. In that counterattack, 13 workers were killed. And we're going to see Harstum move forward and then split off Zealots. Harstum's going to be avoiding having too many Zealots in his army composition. He wants it to be largely Zealotless. Another cool technique that Harstum uses that we'll talk about later, Photon Cannons in a forward position. Why are these Zealots moving forward? Because these units are out of the way. Forward army movement from Harstum. He's going to take some stuff out, but this is a retreat-focused force. He's just going to pull his butt back. During the retreat, it is so important to note the benefit that is gained. You can storm an army that is chasing after you. The whole army retreats. The Templar are like, yeah, dude, bring it on. I don't have a problem with that. That's where the damage is going to be dealt to the main army. And then in the counter-attacking sense, these zealots were sent over there a while ago. Only when the big army's coming in does the counter-attack begin, does the counter-attack begin. Chilling at home. Look how few zealots are in this force. Eleven. Compared to five Colossus and Archon. Some stalkers. Three Templar here. More Templar everywhere. Lots of cannons. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cannons every which way. In fact, the last thing that Harstum does is grow his gateway count. The last thing he does is grow his robo count. Ruthlessly patient. Counterattacking. In the course of these little counters, he's killed 22 workers total. And as we see this big force moving forward again, this is when Harstum seeks to do these counterattacks. He's not forcing the counters by any means whatsoever. For doink. There's a little damage going down here. A little bit of obnoxiousness going down there. Successfully killing off workers. His total kill count, 25. Just slowly gooping forward on the map. i got to speed this up. I'm not going to be able to finish my show in time. In time. Now, one of the most painful moments is when you are maxed out and can't really do that much with your money. Well, Harstum just builds cannons in a forward position. What's the big danger of you losing to in this late game? Well, it's losing to ghosts sniping your Templar. It's losing to Vikings killing off your Colossus. And the ghosts killing the Templar get abated by these photon cannons very easily. We have another counterattack set up. We have another counterattack set up. Harstum is setting up a forward position for his aggressive army. In the early, and or I would say in the mid-game, in the very young parts of the late game, Harstum is using this juicy big army to retreat backwards and then counterattack as he retreats. And here we're just seeing Harstum pick up more and more value connections. Not a lot of zealots in this force. Harstum is always going to use zealots as an emergency backup in his main force, but I will emphasize that even the slightest of step forwards from the Terran player, like this little step forward, is signal enough for Harstum to do the counterattack. If we were in mid-game, and Harstum had fewer bases, yeah, he'd want to wait much longer to do that counterattack. Now the Harstum has a fifth base up, and he's readily going to be chopping Jokji down to just three. I mean, it's very pretty to see, and I think this vision demonstrates the final result of this. Look at the line of pylons. It also provides a ring of vision. This zealot is closing the gap between this pylon and this pylon to make sure it's a straight line of vision. Straight line of vision all the way up. This is, in fact, the only vision gap. Uh, the Dark Templar just kind of level up the regular counterattacking. They're not really the core of the counterattacking so much. Uh, but a, a very useful lesson from Harstum. We see two at these um, planetary fortresses. One is warp in stalkers to shoot the SCVs at the planetaries. Because most good Terran players will avoid... Um, having too many units positioned there. And uh, use Dark Templars to kill off the turrets. This is a pretty standard late game counterattack. A couple Zealots, a couple DTs. 
force him to waste scans. We've killed off so many SCVs thus far, so why not make him waste scans, aka more money? More cannons getting produced, where are they? Oh, buy another base. Slow and sure, tried and true, Harstum does bad things to you. Go, Harstum. And you know what I love? Harstum still hasn't attacked. Isn't that amazing? Harstum has not yet done a big attack with his frontal force here. He has done only warp and counterattacks. He's killed things with storms. He's now killed 59 workers. Has a stalker here. He's moved forward, but to retreat in order to let these counterattacks work. That's it. It's like a, it's like a counterattack focused thing. It's focused on retreat. These are retreat focused attacks. Thank God I can retreat with this attack that gives these zealots a better opportunity. 64 workers killed in total. And that game I would call the straightforward game. The very clean, the very everything go in Harstum's direction sort of game. With the exception of the Mothership core getting killed off. Well, I don't want to say everything went in Harstum's direction, but I, I, would, I would describe that as controlled. That's like if you tried to drive really fast and it was a fairly straight path. You kind of get a little bit of adrenaline, but nothing unexpected occurred. But in this game, it's going to turn out we're going to try to race on the back of a great dragon. Many a twist and turn that we cannot predict before us. Harstum in the top right, Jokchi down the bottom. Now there's some important lessons that I want to begin with that don't really have that much to do with this game in particular. It has to do with the idea of... Um, being real with yourself about um, where you are on your skill trajectory. Being really genuine and honest with yourself. And it's not important that you be a big badass who's right. You don't need to be right actually almost ever in life, ever. That is a not important thing to value. You need to be just honest with yourself and let me give an example. I'll oftentimes hear people say something like, you know, on this map, you know, like, I could go Nexus first, but, you know, there, there's some risks to it, and, you know, I'd much prefer. I think Gateway's probably a little stronger. Uh, so that's, that's kind of why I went for it. And the person who's saying this is actually full of shit. They just haven't practiced a Nexus first. They just haven't. And I don't want you to be that person. There's no need ever to just admit something very simple that's a deficiency and say, yeah, and I'm, and I'm very specifically devoted to working on that. For instance, when I used to train for uh, the Brood War WCG tournaments, oftentimes I would have like a build that I would really perfect and refine in Zerg vs. Terran. And I used it on two or three of the four maps that were there. And on that fourth map, I would sometimes come up with the, a really good build for that map. And sometimes I would just be like, dude, I'm just going to do my practice thing. And I'm going to tell you, I played Brood War competitively for 11 years. And you will always do better with the not as optimal build that you've practiced a lot versus the optimal build that you're trying out for the first time ever. That is so okay to do. And what I used to do as an inexperienced competitor is say something like, no, you know, I really like this build on this map. Yeah, I really think it's gonna be really, I think Mutalisks are weak on this map actually. Mutalisks are fucking amazing on that map. I don't need to lie to myself to try to sound like I'm Mr. Right. But what I found, though, is that my win rate was higher when I did my practice build than when I went Mutalisks for a first-time play. So in this game, this is pertinent here because Harstum is not going to go Nexus first, which is the extremely standard play. He's going to go Gateway first. And you could argue that the probability of someone going for some aggressive play early is so low that going gateway first is wasteful. You're lowering your win percentage. But you know what? We saw Harstum kick fucking ass in the last game. 
there is nothing wrong if you were Harstum to say, you know, I didn't have enough time to practice a specific build for each map. I just got really good at one build and I kind of learned to tweak it and adapt it. Um, if I had more time, that would be one of the first things I'd do is focus on that. That is an okay thing to say. Just be really honest with yourself because if you are not, you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot in terms of your long-term play. So for instance, I know some people will say things like, what is a strategy that's good for a low APM player? And I'm like, no, ah, ah. Do the strategy that needs the high APM and say something like, yeah, and I know I'm supposed to micro my Hellions here uh, to try to deal damage to his Queens, but I'm not fast enough to. I'm just working on my in-base macro first, and when I get good at that, now I'll come back to that. Don't give me the, well, I'd rather start with the worst, completely horrible play altogether and just tell myself that it's suitable for me. And then neglect any kind of improvement. Hell, you can even do the in-between thing where you're like, I'm going to do this build that's real until macro comes more naturally, and then I'm going to try the hard, hard build. I don't want you to master something that's broken, knowing it's broken, and justify yourself to your broken play. Sometimes things, given circumstances, are a little bit more subtle. Alright, cool. So we see Harsom doing all the usual standard stuff that we talked about in the last game, building the Zealot and canceling it to Waboosh! Build a Nexus! Now I see Mothership Core come up. We see the Ripa do a little bit of damage. You don't want to lose that Reaper! So he gets out. And then we see, again, little cute touches. A pylon down here from Harstum very early already. Not going to be used for a long, long time. We're going for the Assimilator. Actually, uh, I went a little bit long distance there for a moment. But we see the Reaper that's coming into the main base. Here's the Mothership Core. So again, we want Stalker. We want a another Pylon. We also want Warp Gate. But what do we do about this Reaper here? Is there a little adjustment that we would need to make? Well, we see the Mothership Core, more or less, is able to hold stuff off. This Pylon gets cancelled because it doesn't need to be there. A little bit of an error. See Harston more or less doing everything the same except getting the Stalker. Before Warp Gate, Warp Gate comes in last. In the last game, he skipped the Stalker. Why? Because he didn't see a Reaper. Done! Clean and easy, clean and clear. Harstum is a winning player here. Goes for the Robotics Facility. Let's actually go to the Harstum cam. It's like my favorite cam. Speeding it up, build and stalker number two. And soon enough, stalker number three. Guess what comes out of the robo? If you said observer, observer, damn, you're good. It's an observer. Assimilators, a little bit later, a slight bit later, because he was a slight bit delayed. But here comes one, here comes two. And there's the robo bay. Boom. You know what sounds really good after the second observer? Aeorop Prism! We won't even see this Warp Prism get used nearly to the degree that we saw it get used in the previous game. There's the Twilight Council, there's the Forge. Right as the Robo Facility finishes up the Warp Prism, we're gonna get a Colossus! C C C C C C C. And yeah, there it goes. Boom! up and away. We don't really see that much, we don't really know too much, but we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna get blank. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get plus one armor. Chrono boosts up until now have been spent only on probes. And thusly, we get down ourselves the plus one armor. This map, we see a little bit of an easier defense of Jack G's Assault, yada yada yada, gonna speed it up, gonna try to go a little quicker. Do 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 This observer, excuse me, this warp prism, he doesn't do much at all. But again, 
a willingness to build additional cannons before getting the gateway count too high. Not a gross excess of gateways that can do some sort of massive counter. Just enough to build a solid little chunk of stalkers to defend the Colossus. Just enough to be able to get some Colossus out and buying just enough time to get a very, very late Thermal Lance. And we see a not fast, but a very well defended Nexus. I love it. Absolutely love it. Mothership Core at the back. Let's do that overcharge. Observer here. Army wear at the blind spot. Be sure to be aware of these. Here is a blind spot. Here is a blind spot. Here is not. We have an observer. Here is not. We have an observer. What's defending this? Well, the Mothership Core right here. And the cannon. And the other blind spot is defended by the whole damn army. Look at that Harstum responsibly getting those counterattack pylons set up. We see the blind spot was successfully defended. Great. Not doing anything until this point in time. Just setting himself up. Warp Prism, part of that setup. We already saw Jokti responsible enough to kill this pylon. Missed this one, but what if he killed off both? Do we have any counterattack potential? Yep. Already up and ready. Um, great. Second Forge coming up, just as we talked about. Gateways going up to 8, just as we talked about. I uh, don't think anything else notable happens for a little while. So right around this moment in time... Okay. Man, okay, let me just say, I'm so sorry I'm going a little bit longer than I had intended to. I think we'll watch most of the second part in part three. But I want to do one little start to the attacking, because I think it is the army and counterattack positioning from Harstum that makes him just so awesome to watch in this matchup. Um, here, you heard me say that this is a juncture point where often Terran are looking to kill the Protoss. That's only sometimes. Other times we see the Terran just transitioning normally, getting their upgrades, getting the 3-3, getting Cloak for Ghosts. So Harstum does something that I just absolutely love. Again, he moves out with the intent to retreat, allowing the Storms to pick up extra kills, and allowing these counterattacks, such as from this Warp Prism, to deal some damage. As he is doing any push out, probes are completing the threat. I like that phrase, completing the threat. What is the number one threat? It would be pylons on the left, pylons on the right. Able to counterattack through this right passage and able to counterattack through this left passage. Oh yeah. All the way like that. And of course, the central threat, the big army. Literally, like, central, as in, like, in the center of the of the two counterattack paths. So here we go, Harstum. He moves on forwards. He's gonna move. He's gonna retreat. Why? So he can pick up the storming opportunities. A little counterattack. Defend for a while till you get an army. Move forward with the army. Complete the threat. And then commence your counterattacks. This was marginally mistimed, as we see most of the army still present. And what does Harstum do? He's going to advance forward, buying him opportunity to set up the expansion, and buying himself lots of room to retreat along. He's rounding out his composition. Rounding out is the term for getting the stuff that you don't have already. If you went Colossus and you were rounding out, you'd be getting Templar. To arrive at Colossus Templar. If you open Templar first and now you're getting Colossus, you are rounding out. So you have both Templar and Colossus. Rounding out his composition, getting all the remainder of the gateways up as he's now on four bases. Move forward by Harstum is not with the goal of trying to attack and win. Although occasionally it does, like maybe 10-20% of the time it does. It's to provide glorious and gorgeous opportunities to retreat 
that we may get excellent storms unlike that one that totally blew. As we're retreating, notice that we have opportunities to counter down here, to counter here once we get these rocks down. But, in case you think you're gonna die, you can always warp in all those zealots right there and BOOM! Retreating to allow the counterattack. A retreat focused aggression. There's a pylon here, and here, and here, and here. A doo wop bop a dee boo. So with this Doom Drop coming up, it might very well appear to have been a tragic, unfortunate consequence. With the spreading out of Templar everywhere, it gets cleaned up quite well, and we see that Jokji actually lost more than Harstom, even though Harstom lost the more permanent structure of the Nexus. And as we stop here at the 20 minute mark, this is a good time to take a break. Oh, actually I want to show one failed attack down here first. Uh, okay, so Harstom is going to continue to do this move where he advances forward in order to retreat. And what would Harstom love to do? He'd love to get these zealots out of this composition, so he's going to begin moving in. Moves right down front and center. Doesn't really manage to do much. Sends the stalkers down here. Doesn't really manage to do much. Sets himself up at the front and sends in some troops and doesn't really manage to do much. Oh, now this is a fun time to stop. What do you do? What do you do as a Harstom? I said that most Masters and Grandmasters will generally have the game more or less decided by 15-16 minutes. The Terran's big move-in will win, or Protoss will crush it so badly, Protoss may have well has won. May of well. May as well have won. Words. Normally those games are decided by around 16 minutes. And I would say that for the folks who practice a lot, a lot, a lot at Harstom or Jackji level, a lot of games have already been decided by this point now, by the 22 minute. Typically, the Protoss counterattacks have whittled the Terran away so much that it's clear he's going to win, or the Protoss has lost enough bases, lost enough with his counterattacks that it's done. We're not neither of those. How does the game continue? What opportunities does Jokchi have? It doesn't seem like Jokchi can hit the planetary fortress base. It doesn't seem like Harstom, excuse me, it doesn't seem like Harstom can hit the planetary base. It doesn't seem like Harstom can hit the main or the back door. What's a Harstom to do? Well, don't worry, because we don't need to think too hard, because Harstom's going to show us with his bossness. Oh, we'll be back in just a sec to examine. Also, shout out to the original Furkles and Biggs Oove. Biggs Oove for the sub in action. Woo! Let's listen to some beats. 